Mr. Wilson been having fun? Oh, Dennis, I hope you haven't been bothering Mr. Wilson. Heck no, he was glad to see me and said, let's play a game. <laughs> Mr. Wilson said, let's play a game? Sure, I guess he has more fun with me than with anybody. What game did you play? Hide and seek. Mr. Wilson said, I'll hide first, and if you can't find me, the game's over and you go home. So here I am. <laughs> What do you mean you can't get out? I can't open the door. <laughs> Wait, what were you doing in there anyway? Well, uh, Dennis and I were playing a... Uh, oh, never mind. Just go get Mitchell. He can take the door off the hinges. <laughs> Mr. Free Man, Mr. Wilson. Oh, good. <laughs> Mr. Kramer's due any moment. Oh, Kramer, he was your old boss, wasn't he? Oh, indeed he was. He, he's the president of the company. He was very unhappy when George decided to retire. And tell him what uh, Mr. Kramer said, dear. He said the Kramer Business Machines Company was losing a valuable employee. It's most valuable employee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Wilson, push on the door. There we are. Oh, thank you, Mitchell. Oh, great Scott. I feel like the prisoner of Zenda. <laughs> What's Mr. Kramer doing in town? Well, I don't know. He, he called me long distance, said it was very important that he talked to me right away. He was, why, he was quite mysterious. George, you know what I think? Oh, now, Martha, I've been retired for five years. An important man like Mr. Kramer isn't going to waste his time checking up on a dozen pencils. <laughs> Do you want me to put that door back before Kramer gets here? Oh, no, no, no. Just leave it there, Mitchell. I'll take care of it. Okay, in that case, I'll run along. I wouldn't want Kramer seeing me dressed like this. <laughs> well, thanks again, Mitchell. Bye. Bye. My, we're lucky to have such nice neighbors. Well, two-thirds of them are nice. <laughs> that other third's driving me off my rocker. <laughs> What's your old top hat doing down here? Oh, Dennis must have found that up in the attic. <laughs> hey, you know, Martha, it, it takes a certain flair to wear a top hat. It certainly does. And you have it more than anyone. Oh, thank you, my dear. But I don't think I'd give Fred Astaire much to worry about. <laughs> do you? Oh, I don't know, dear. When you used to do your Fred Astaire imitations. Oh, you remembered. Well, of course I do, dear. <laughs> do it for me now. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, go on, George, do it. Oh, Martha, don't be silly. It's been too many years ago. Well, what would I use for a cane? Use this. All right, you be Ginger Rogers. Oh, go on, George. <laughs> well, let's see if I can remember it. <laughs> oh, George, that was wonderful. Well, the old legs are still pretty spry, eh? They certainly are. Do it up and down the stairs for me. Well, all right. Say, you know, it's too bad you don't have the camera out. Kramer. <laughs> George Wilson, I remember that Fred Astaire imitation from the office party. Oh, Mr. Kramer, well, uh, this is no party. You see, the little neighbor boy, hey, uh, uh, oh, well, never mind. If I told you about him, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, yes, he's responsible for that, too. My, it's good to see you again, Mr. Kramer. Good to see you, Mrs. Wilson. 
brought you cup here. Yes, thank you. My, it certainly is. <laughs> well, well, this is just like old times. <laughs> how, how have you been, Mr. Kramer? Oh, fine, Wilson, fine. How about you? Has your retirement been everything you expected? Oh, oh, yes, yes, sir. It's been marvelous. <laughs> yes, indeed. I uh, spend most of my time working in the garden. <laughs> You'd be amazed how much time he spends out there. He's turning our yard into a regular show place. <laughs> oh, my latest project is is right uh, by this window here. Uh, yes, I have some, some prize periwinkles. They're just beginning to poke their little heads up uh, above the ground. <laughs> Well, I'm eagerly awaiting the moment they burst into glorious bloom. <laughs> well, frankly, Wilson, I was hoping you were missing the company. It certainly misses you. Oh, oh, well, I, I do. Yes, Mr. Kramer, indeed. That was a big part of my life for many years. Oh, a man doesn't forget that overnight. <laughs> How would you like to come back to work? Come back to work, mm -hmm. Mr. Kramer? But why would you want an old duffer like me back in harness? Why, you have plenty of young men coming up. Well, they haven't any experience or judgment or your executive ability. Well, <laughs> that's very nice of you, but... Uh... The Pittsburgh office has gone to pot, Wilson. The sales have fallen off to the point where it's either close the office or bring in a man who knows what he's doing. And I think you're that man. <laughs> Pittsburgh's in Pennsylvania. Yes, it would mean moving. Moving? Oh, moving. Oh, well, I don't know, Mr. Kramer. Well, now, think of the financial end of it, Wilson. Your investment income can't be too much, and we're prepared to make you a very attractive deal. Now, will you take it over? Well, I don't know, Mr. Kramer. I... Uh, Mr. Wilson! <laughs> Yes, Mr. Kramer, I will think it over. <laughs> How soon do you need my decision? Well, fast, Wilson. I have a board of directors meeting coming up. I can only give you 24 hours. 24 hours? Well, that's not much time. Hey, Mr. Wilson, you want to play some more hide-and-seek? 24 hours will give me plenty of time, Mr. Kramer. <laughs> well, how do you feel about it, Mr. Wilson? Well, naturally, I'll do whatever George wants. But you'd rather stay here. Oh, Alice, this is our home. This is where our friends are, our neighbors. Well, Mr. Wilson hasn't made up his mind yet, has he? No. He's out in the hammock thinking it over. I am not taking a nap, and I have the fly swatter because I can't stand flies on me, and the lemonade because I'm thirsty. Now, are you satisfied? Sure. Did you make the lemonade like you usually do with about ten spoons of sugar in it? Yes, I did. Now, if you don't mind, Dennis, I'm trying to think. What are you thinking about? Crap. There's someone you can. Oh. Well, I'm thinking about grave issues and large sums of money. Didn't Mrs. Wilson give you your allowance? <laughs> I don't have an allowance. You haven't? Jeepers, I have. Great Scott. Do you want me to lend you a nickel? No. A dime? No. Now, look, Dennis, I am trying to think. If you're going to stay here, you'll have to be absolutely quiet. Okay, Mr. Wilson. <sighs> okay. Hey, Mr. Wilson, give me your fly swatter. What? Give me the fly swatter. <laughs> oh, Pete's sink. He was right on that spot where you spilled the lemonade with all the sugar in it. I don't care where he was, never hit him when they're on me. Never? No, never. Okay, Mr. Wilson, I'll just stand here and wave at him. Of course, he is interested. It makes him feel important, and bless his heart, George likes to feel important. Whoa. What in the world? Well, you think someone was after him? Where is he? Where is he? George, what's the matter? I'll tell you what's the matter. It's that boy. Well, now, hold on, Mr. Wilson. What did he do? 
I was out in the hammock and Dennis was hanging around. Well, what's the matter with that? Oh, good gravy, Martha. Sometimes I think you and I don't know the same boy. I was lying there. I was thinking about Pittsburgh and my eyes were closed. Well, was he making noise? No, he wasn't making a sound. But I heard a buzzing. A buzzing? Yes. And I opened my eyes and three honeybees were right on the front of my shirt and a couple more coming in for a landing. Well, I wonder what was attracting them. Well, he... Oh, never mind what was attracting them. The point is, Dennis had the fly swatter. When I said, hit him, he said, oh, why better not? You'll get mad. And so he just waved at them with the fly swatter. Well, he was trying to get them off you. Oh, sure. Then the bees got mad and I had to run for my life. Well, were either one of you stung? Yes, I was. Oh, George, where? Well, just never you mind. <laughs> But I'll tell you one thing, if we move to Pittsburgh, it will be because of Dennis. George, you don't mean that. Oh, I most certainly do. George isn't himself. Well, you can't blame him. Bee stings are no fun. It's their chemistry. You mix Dennis with Mr. Wilson and you get dynamite. Well, if we move to Pittsburgh. Yes, Mrs. Wilson, you can move to Pittsburgh. Mr. Wilson's one of my best friends. Not Dennis. If he's mad at me, tell him to hit me or something, but don't move away. Dennis. To tell him I'll stand out in his front yard and he can throw rocks at me. Dennis, don't be silly. Now, Dennis, listen to me. Mr. Wilson doesn't want to hit you. He's very fond of you. Then how come he's moving to Pittsburgh? Well, if we move to Pittsburgh, it won't be because of you. That's not what Mr. Wilson said. Well, Mr. Wilson was upset. Just forget he said it. That's right, son. Run out and see what Tommy's doing, dear. Okay. From now on, I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna stop making dynamite, and I'm gonna start closing doors, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Oh, fine. Now he's back to slamming them. <laughs> Where is Pittsburgh? Keepers, Tommy, don't you know anything? It's in Philadelphia. <laughs> I gotta think of something so Mr. Wilson will stay here. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with Mr. Wilson. Remember last summer when we had that taffy pull at his house? That was one of the swellest times I ever had. Boy, I was sick all night. Yeah, me too. Did you ever get it out? Oh, sure. Long time ago. <laughs> I gotta think of something so Mr. Wilson will like me again, and then he'll stay. Yes, you're right, Martha. Absolutely right. I mustn't make an emotional decision. I must approach it logically. That's my George. <laughs> you know, Martha, I am blessed with an analytical mind that is capable of getting right to the bones of an issue. Oh, did I say bones? To the marrow, my dear, the very marrow. You certainly are, George. Now, let us consider Pittsburgh as a place to live. I hear it's smoggy. Oh, Martha, that's all in the past. Why, the air in Pittsburgh's like sparkling wine, exhilarating, my dear. Why, the city is clean, progressive, forward-looking. I'm going to miss our friends and neighbors. I'll miss Alice and Henry and little... Oh, don't say it, Martha. <laughs> I am trying not to be emotional. Now, what in the world is that? It's Dennis and his little friend singing to you. Why, so it is. <laughs> Dennis is so fond of you. He told me once that he wanted to be just like you when he grows up. Oh, really? Basically, Dennis is a, a fine boy. Has high ideals. <laughs> Go to the window and tell him you're not angry with him. Well, all right. <laughs> are standing in my new periwinkle bed. <laughs> <laughs>
settles it, Martha. We are moving to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm sure gonna miss Mr. Wilson. We all are. Well, maybe some nice new neighbors will move in next door. I don't want nice neighbors. I want good old Mr. Wilson. <laughs> That's been a good friend. Remember last winter when he shoveled the driveway so I wouldn't be late for work? And Mrs. Wilson. I don't know what we'd have done when I had the flu if she hadn't done all the cooking. Mr. Wilson's been a good fishing buddy. Nobody can tie a fly like George Wilson. And I can't remember all the times they babysat for us. Excuse me. He's taught me all I know about gardening. I'm going to go write a letter. A letter? Who to? To Mr. Wilson. Poor Kitty's probably going to say goodbye. Yours truly, Dennis Mitchell. show you something. Now look, I put this door back just for appearances sake, but the latch, it still isn't fixed. Well, you can't expect the real estate people to send anyone so soon. You only called them an hour ago. Ah, oh, my dear, preparedness is the hallmark of a good executive. Someone might come. <laughs> Point is, don't ever try to close that door. We'll never get it open again. <laughs> What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh. What? like it's from Dennis. Dear Mr. Wilson, me and Mom and Dad are down in the dumps because we're going to miss you if you move. <laughs> Everybody is. I know you're moving because of me, so don't do it. I've moved instead. Now Mom and Dad can get out of the dumps. I've moved. Yours truly, Dennis Mitchell. Hey, George, he's left home. Oh, great Scott, run away. He did it because of me. Oh, I feel awful. Don't blame yourself. Well, I do, Martha. We've got to go over and tell the Mitchells about this. Well, there's no telling what kind of peril that boy might be in. Sure, Dennis. I'd be glad to have you move in here with me. But we'll have to ask my mom first when she gets home. Do you think your mom will let me stay? Have I been in any trouble around here lately? No, <laughs> not lately. She had the lamp fixed a long time ago. <laughs> Aren't you going to miss your folks? You won't be seeing them. I'll go over and watch television with him every night after he gets dark. <laughs> that way, Mr. Wilson won't see me. Now Mom and Dad can get out of the dumps. I've moved yours truly, Dennis Mitchell. Oh, Henry, my little baby. Oh, take it easy, honey. We'll find him. Oh, I feel responsible for the whole thing. It isn't your fault. Of course not. It was the talk of our moving that did it. Now, George. Well, we are not moving to Pittsburgh. Now, you just get that idea right out of your head. <laughs> Operator, please give me the police department. Uh, hello, Sergeant. I'd like to report a little boy who's run away from home. Oh, here, Mitchell. Let me have that phone. I can get right through to the chief, Foster Stewart. That would be wonderful, Mr. Wilson. Sergeant, uh, this is Mr. George Wilson speaking. Put me through to the chief. Thank you. They all know me. <laughs> Foster, George. Look, Foster, we need your help. Our little neighbor boy has run away. Dennis Mitchell. Yes, that's the one. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, striped shirt, and overalls. Right. And I'll give a $100 reward to the officer that brings him home. The address is 627 Elm Street. Thanks, Foster. Yes, goodbye. That's very generous of you, Mr. Wilson. Oh, nonsense. I want to give the officers an incentive to really keep their eyes open. How soon before they start looking? Oh, in a matter of minutes. You see, the patrol cars will be alerted by radio. I suppose all we can do now is wait. No, 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 I'm not finished yet. Who are you calling? I'm calling the radio station. Yes, I'll have them broadcast the same offer to the general public. <laughs> Dead. 
Because I'm the fastest draw on this block, that's why. Uh, you know, uh, I used to put notches in the barrel of my old gun. But once I filed too deep, it fell off. It must be something else for a while. I'm tired of being an Indian. Okay. What do you want to do? Let's go look in your refrigerator. Let's spoil our dinner. It's almost five. Hey, at five we can turn on the radio. The lady in blue will be reading the funnies. Okay. What do you want to do until five? Why don't we go to your refrigerator and just look? But Henry, where will he eat tonight and sleep? I don't know, but I can't stand to sit around here and wait any longer. I'm gonna go get in the car and find him. It's a police car. They found him! How are you? Where's my checkbook? I wanna go home! You are home. <laughs> well, I found him. Pretty sure put up a fight. <laughs> Officer, that's not Dennis. He isn't? I told you and told you. I'm little Richie Thompson. Oh, well, I'll take you right back where I found you, son. My mom's gonna be mad. She told me not to leave the block. I'm sorry to trouble you, folks. Oh, come on. <laughs> and boys and girls, do you know what Betty and Bob found when they got home? They found the scooter. They found the scooter. We interrupt this program to bring you this bulletin. A $100 reward is offered for the return of Dennis Mitchell to his home at 627 Elm Street. It is requested that anyone seeing this boy tell him the Wilsons are not moving to Pittsburgh. Oh, boy! The Mitchell's boy's description is as follows. Blonde, blue eyes, striped shirt. Are you sure? Officer, I ought to know my own boy. Well, he most certainly should. My dad's an alderman. He'll fire you. <laughs> yes, sonny. Uh, come on, I'll take you home, huh? Sorry, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Your offer of a reward has certainly put the police on their toes. Oh, yes. Every blonde, blue-eyed boy in the city gets a free ride in a police car. <laughs> Over at Tommy's house, did you miss me? Oh, of course we yes, did. Yes, you must never do that again. I should say not. Why, I've been worried sick. We all have. Hey, guess who was on the radio? Me and good old Mr. Wilson. <laughs> You're not moving to Pittsburgh, did you know that? Of course I knew it. So me and Tommy are splitting a hundred dollar reward. What? So you brought me home. Now, just a minute. <laughs> now, hold on, Dennis. You can't take a reward for bringing yourself home. Besides, it's from Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson put up a reward for me? Well, yes, I did, Dennis. Boy, I love you too, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> well, that's fine. And I wouldn't take a reward from you even if you told me to. All the reward I want is that you're not moving. Oh, well, you're a good boy, Dennis. <laughs> so you can give it all to Tommy. <laughs> Jeepers, Mr. Wilson, I don't want it either. Martha! <laughs> Aren't these the nicest boys? <laughs> oh, it's so nice of you to have us all over. Well, it's a joyous occasion having little Dennis back. Yes. Come on, Dennis. I'm coming! Oh, let me have your wrap, oh, Alice. Thank you. Come on in, dear. It's just a simple dinner, but I thought you'd enjoy not having to cook. Oh, I certainly will. <laughs> Come on in, Dennis. But I'm going to stay and help you with the dishes. <laughs> Did you notice, Mrs. Wilson? I didn't forget to close the single door. Hey, where's Mr. Wilson?
This has been a Screen Gems film production from the Hollywood studios of Columbia Pictures.